G'day and welcome back to Project 300. If you tow anything much bigger than a box trailer with your 300, then this video is for you. Because two items you'll almost certainly need are an electric brake controller, plus a trailer power cable with an Anderson plug. And these are what I'll be installing today. Rather than doing all the wiring from scratch though, I'll be using plug and play kits from Richard's Auto Electrical. Although these kits can be installed separately, because much of the wiring path is the same, it makes sense to install both kits simultaneously. These kits not only save hours on the installation time, but they also include factory plugs and connectors, making the installation much neater, easier and more reliable. The trailer brake kit uses a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite, which is really the only brake controller to use these days. The main module mounts neatly under the dash, while the control knob slots into the included mounting plate, making it look like a factory accessory. The 50 amp grey Anderson kit delivers power to the trailer, which in my case will run DC to DC chargers for the trailer batteries. I'll also be adding an optional extra relay kit, so the power is only active when the ignition is switched on. This eliminates the chance of the trailer discharging the starting battery. You can find all of these kits on the Richards Auto website. They do come with comprehensive instructions, but because I'll be installing essentially three kits at the same time, this install video will move back and forth a little between the kits, depending on the best order for each step. Now let's get into the install. Before you start, open the rear tailgate and then the bonnet. Remove the plastic trim covering the battery and set it aside. Then first disconnect the negative battery cable, followed by the positive battery cable. Then use a socket and extension to remove the two bolts on the battery clamp. Then remove the battery and set it aside. Unpack the tow pro kit and find the small plastic bracket. Connect the bracket to the tow pro main unit as shown, using the included nuts and bolts. Then get the switch, dash plate and the extension cable from the kit. Disassemble the switch, removing it from the included black plastic casing. Then insert the switch into the supplied Land Cruiser 300 switch blank. Fit the clear plastic nut onto the switch mechanism, then tighten by hand with a 12mm socket. Don't over tighten it. Turn the switch shaft all the way anti-clockwise, then push the Red Arc control knob on with the zero position at the top dead centre. Now move to the front passenger footwell. Release the four clips on the trim panel under the glove box, then lower the trim down. Disconnect the wiring to the footwell light if fitted. Then, using a 10mm socket, remove the mounting bolt on the small metal bracket as shown. Set the bolt aside for reuse later. Next, remove the sill trim piece by pulling directly upwards with your hands. You may need to wiggle it to disconnect it from the B-pillar trim. Then remove the side footwell trim by first removing the plastic retaining nut using a screwdriver, then pulling the trim directly backwards to unclip it. Next open the rear passenger door and remove the rear sill trim in the same way as the front trim. Now get the main cable from the Anderson plug kit and move under the bonnet. Remove the lower of the two factory wiring grommets as shown. Then take the Anderson connector end of the cable and feed it through the hole in the firewall. Move back into the footwell area and pull a metre or so of the cable through. Then get the pink and white twin cable from the ignition relay kit and tape the unterminated ends to the Anderson cable. Then move back under the bonnet and pull the Anderson cable partially back through until you get the pink and white cable. You can then untape it from the Anderson cable. Strip the pink and white wires, then connect them to the matching wires on the other half of the ignition relay cable from the kit. Crimp both of the connections, and then use a heat gun on the heat shrink tube to seal them. I'm also adding a layer of electrical tape just to keep the wires neatly together. You can then move back into the footwell and pull most of the Anderson cable through until the attached grommet is close to the fire. Then add the ignition relay cable to the Anderson cable grommet and fit the grommet into the hole in the fire. There should be about 30 centimetres of each cable remaining in the engine bay. Now move back to the footwell again. Attach the switch extension wire to the tow pro. 
and then mount it into position using a bolt through the metal bracket. Leave the switch wire in the footwell for now and then attach the main Topro wiring loom from the kit to the Topro. While we're still in the footwell, we're going to wire the PTC connector. This connector is used for multiple Richards kits. Take the white plug on the Topro loom and release the locking tab on the plug using a small flat blade screwdriver. Then insert the pink wire from the relay kit into position 3 and then the white cable from the relay kit into position 6. Then carefully reinsert the locking tab and push it closed with pliers. You can then insert the plug into the empty socket in the footwell as shown. Now we need to run both the Topro and Anderson looms together to the rear of the car. Release the sill wiring clips using a small screwdriver as shown. Then leaving a little bit of slack cable in the footwell, run the two looms along the sill under the clips together with the factory wiring. You can then push the looms into the void between the plastic B-pillar trim and the carpet. Then move into the rear door area and continue running the cables between the B-pillar trim and the carpet. You may have to manipulate the B-pillar trim using your hands or a trim tool to squeeze the cables under it. Then lift up the cable covers in the rear and run the looms through them as shown. Then push the cable covers back down into place. Now we need to disassemble the floor in the cargo area to run the cables out to the tow bar. Begin by opening the covers over the third row seats. Then using a trim tool, release the three clips securing each side of the carpet flaps to the underside of the covers. Then take hold of the cover plate and lift it directly upwards to remove it. It's secured by plastic clips. Next, lift open each of the cargo tie-down loops. Then use a trim tool to open the plastic flap. You can then use a 10mm socket to remove the bolts securing the cargo hooks to the floor and then remove the hooks themselves. Then using your hands, lift out the trim pieces on either side as shown. You can then remove the plastic tool storage tray by lifting it directly upwards. Again, it's secured only by plastic clips. Then get up into the cargo area and raise the backrest of the left side third row seat. Using a trim tool, lever up the plastic trim in front of the seat base, secured with plastic clips. As with any of these plastic trims, if any of the clips remain in their holes, remove them with a trim tool and replace them in the plastic trim. Now loosen the two bolts holding down the front of the seat assembly. Then run the two loom cables under the wheel arch trim, working towards the rear of the car. Before you continue behind the seat, pull the seat base forward into the regular seating position. Then move back to the rear of the car. Remove the metal trim cover over the wiring connector. Then remove both of the bolts securing the rear of the seat assembly. Now continue running the two looms under the side trim, all the way to the back where they meet the factory wiring loom. Next, disconnect the two wiring plugs on the left side seat assembly, then lift up the rear of the assembly and prop it up using the metal trim removed earlier. Cut the small section of sound deadening on the right side of the seat, then fold it back to reveal the factory rubber plug in the floor. You can remove the plug. Take hold of the rubber grommet that's pre-attached to the Topro loom. Then take hold of the Anderson connector and feed it through the grommet with the Topro loom. Feed it all the way through the grommet until the slack in the Anderson loom is taken up. Then feed the cables out through the hole in the floor until you reach the grommet. Then insert the grommet into the hole. Now move under the car and locate the fuse holder on the factory loom. Carefully remove the tape on the loom to release the fuse holder, then remove the lid and remove the 10 amp fuse. Transfer the fuse and the waterproof cap to the new fuse holder on the Topro loom. Then connect the matching plug on the Topro loom with the red wires to the factory connector where you just removed the fuse. These wiring instructions suit standard 7-pin plugs with a reverse signal on pin 2. If you instead need to send power out of pin 2, then see the Richards instruction sheet for advice. Now locate the blue wire taped onto the factory loom and carefully release it. Strip the wire, then connect it to the pre-wired joiner on the Topro loom. Crimp the connector, then use a heat gun or lighter on the heat shrink tube to form a waterproof connection. 
Next, remove the two bolts securing the factory 7-pin trailer socket, then detach the 7-pin socket from the bracket. Loop the cable from the supplied Anderson plug cover onto the wiring socket mount, then add the supplied plate between the factory bracket and the wiring socket. You can then reattach the assembly to the bracket using the original screws and nuts. Take the grey Anderson plug from the kit and insert the red cable from the loom into the positive side of the plug as shown. Then insert the short black cable from the kit into the negative side of the plug. Use the supplied screws and nylock nuts to connect the assembled Anderson plug onto the bracket next to the 7 pin plug. To ensure a good earth connection, use a Dremel tool or similar to remove the powder coat from around one of the holes on the factory bracket. Then move under the car and repeat on the corresponding hole on the chassis where the mounting bracket will be reattached. Reattach the factory bracket to the chassis, installing the black cable's earth lug under the bolt where you removed the paint. Tighten both bolts securely. Cable tie all the wiring neatly under the car, well away from the hot exhaust and the sharp edges of the heat shield. Then move back to the passenger side footwell. Pull the carpet aside and feed the tow pro's switch wire under the dash and across to the driver's side. Now move across to the driver's side footwell. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two screws securing the trim piece above the pedals. Then release the three clips and allow the trim piece to drop down. Next, remove the plastic nut securing the footwell side trim and remove it and the sill trim piece in the same way that you did with the passenger side trims. Take the small earth cable with the eyelet and jowl crimp from the ignition relay kit. Then locate the terminal block in the driver's side footwell and find the purple wire with the blue trace as shown. It's pin number 27 in the second row from the left. Clamp the jowl crimp onto this cable and lock it securely using pliers. Connect the eyelet end of the cable to a suitable ground point nearby. I'm using one of the bolts that secures the air ducting just above the accelerator pedal. Once you've secured both ends of the cable, use a multimeter to confirm continuity between the pin and body ground. You can then replace the footwell side trim and the sill trim by pushing them back into place and replacing the plastic nut. Now it's time to install the TowPro control knob. Begin by moving the driver's side capping trim from the side of the dashboard. Start with a trim tool, then use your fingers to pull the trim piece straight off the side of the dash. Then remove the section of dash to the right of the steering column, which contains the switches and blanks. Pull the piece off directly rearwards. Identify which blank you'd like to replace with the control knob. I'm using the one on the top left. Note that you cannot use the one on the top right. Use a small flat blade screwdriver to disengage the locking tabs on the back of the switch blank, then push it out of the dash. Orientate the TowPro knob so the mark is at the top. Then push it into the empty hole on the switch panel until it clicks into place. After routing the switch cable from the main unit on the passenger side up into the dash, plug it onto the back of the control knob. Then refit the switch assembly back into the dash by pushing it straight in to engage the plastic clips. Refit the side dash capping by pushing it straight in towards the centre of the car. Ensure that the switch wire is neatly cable tied into place, then refit the trim under the dash by engaging the tabs at the front, then lifting the trim up to engage the clips. Then replace the two screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then move back over to the passenger side and repeat the reassembly process. First refit the side footwell trim by pushing it into place and refitting the plastic nut. Then refit the trim under the dash by reconnecting the light wire engaging the tabs against the firewall, then pushing upwards to engage the four clips under the glove box. There are no screws on this side. Next, replace the front sill trim by pushing it down to engage the clips. Then run your finger under the door seal if it's been trapped by the sill panel. Then move to the rear door and repeat the procedure, pushing down on the sill trim to engage the clips and then again running your finger along the door seal to ensure it's not stuck under the trim. Now move back to the load area. Replace the sound deadening under the seat and then tidy the wiring up by cable tying it to the factory looms. 
Then lower the seat assembly back into place, ensuring that you don't pinch any of the wiring looms. Replace and tighten the two rear seat mounting bolts, then reconnect the two factory wiring plugs. Replace and reattach the metal cover trim over the left side factory wiring connector. Then move to the front of the seat and re-tighten the two factory mounting bolts. Then replace the plastic trim by pressing it down to engage the plastic clips. Then release the latch and lower the seat back into the floor. Move back to the rear of the car and replace the plastic tool storage tray into position and press down on it to engage the mounting clips. Then, one side at a time, replace the carpeted wing sections into place and secure them by refitting the cargo tie-down hooks and their securing bolts. Finish reassembling the cargo area by putting the rear floor section back into place and pushing down to secure the clips. Then fold the seat covers open and reattach the trim flaps using the original clips. Now it's time to move back under the bonnet and complete the wiring connections. First go to the driver's side and remove the plastic cover over the braking systems by releasing the two clips. Then release the three clips on the relay and fuse box lid and remove the lid. Take the fuse holder and the fuse that came with the Topro kit and insert it into the PTC number one slot as shown. Push it firmly into place. Then take the mini relay that came with the ignition relay kit and insert it into the PTC number three slot as shown. If you also purchased the spare fuse kit from Richards, then attach it along with the QR code identification sticker to the inside lid of the fuse box. You can now replace the plastic covers on both the fuse box and the braking system. Now move over to the passenger side of the engine bay and refit the battery into place, ensuring that the looms coming out of the firewall are routed and cable tied between the battery and the guard so they can't chafe on anything. Refit and tighten the battery securing bracket. Refit the positive battery terminal assembly to the battery, but not the negative cable at this stage. Then remove the red plastic cover from the positive terminal assembly using a small flat blade screwdriver. Remove the nut securing the main positive battery cable as shown. Then flip the cable over and sit it back onto the terminal stud. Fit the MIDI fuse holder that came with the Anderson plug kit onto the terminal stud. Then replace and tighten them up. Now take the mounting plate and the 75 amp relay from the ignition relay kit. Attach the relay to the mounting plate using the supplied screws and nylock nuts. Ensure the screws come through the plate to the relay, not the other way around. Tape back the extra set of pink and white wires back to the loom to prevent chafing. They're only used if you're adding the second ESC relay kit. Then connect the heavy cable running to the back of the car to the relay terminal on the right as shown. Then connect one of the short cables that came with the relay kit to the terminal on the left side of the relay. Finally, connect the white plug to the remaining two terminals on the relay. It can only go on one way. Using the supplied bolt and washer, mount the relay plate to the existing threaded hole on the inner guard between the battery and the fuse box. Then attach the loose end of the short heavy cable from the relay to the front terminal on the fuse holder as shown. Use cable ties to secure all the loose cables away from sharp edges to prevent chafing. Use cutters to trim down the factory plastic positive battery terminal cover to allow for a good fit over the fuse holder. Then press down to refit the terminal cover. You can now reconnect the negative battery cable, but leave the cover off for now. Now that everything's connected, we can test the installations as follows. To test the Anderson plug and relay, first turn on the ignition and then put a multimeter on the positive and negative terminals at the Anderson plug to check the voltage and polarity are correct. With no load, the voltage should match the reading at the battery itself. Now turn the ignition off and recheck the Anderson plug to ensure that there's no voltage present. You can now refit the plastic cover over the battery. To test the tow pro, press the control knob once. It should light up blue and then fade out. To test the operation of the tow pro, you really need to connect a trailer and follow the tow pro setup instructions. If that's not possible, refer to the Richards instruction sheet for a simulation option.
I've tied with the 300 quite a few times since installing the kits, and they've all worked very well. The Australian made Tow Pro is brilliant, and I honestly can't think of a reason why you'd use any other trailer brake controller these days. It's so much better than the bulky traditional units that bolt up under the dash. The power lead and Anderson plug is used, in my case at least, to run a DC to DC charger in the camper and cart trailers, and does the job perfectly without the risk of discharging the starting battery if I leave the trailer connected overnight. I hope you found the installation video of the kits to be useful. Although there are quite a lot of steps, their plug and play design makes them a relatively simple DIY install, and it's definitely better to install all three of these kits at once rather than doing them separately. Thanks for watching. Please check out the Project 300 website for more information, plus links to find the kits and all the tools you'll need to finish the job. See you next time.